Welcome to the Strong Single and Human podcast. A real look at single parenting, how to navigate the ups and downs of life with kids on your own while keeping sane. We cover all manner of subjects from domestic violence, dealing with childhood trauma, through to fussy eaters and how to help your kids become resilient. I'm your host, Claire Martin. Welcome. This week's guest has been on the podcast before and is someone who is deeply passionate about parenting, mental health and wellness. They grew up with the impression they were a loser, feeling worthless and helpless. The environment they rose from wasn't healthy and they struggled academically and while resilient, they felt inadequate for a long time. Arvi Wolfson was as a young adult diagnosed with bipolar type 1, previously known as manic depression, and major depressive disorder, MDD. The anxiety was evident and present within his family, but seldom talked about, nor did he have permission to feel sad or express any feelings beside happiness. In addition, he felt pressured to take on heavy religious activities and had no interest in them. This all took a heavy toll on him, leading him to drink, take drugs and live in music as all of his advices. Arvi joined the US National Guard in high school to absolve himself of this shame. He was proud to serve a country that he loved and protect the society in which we live so freely. But being in the military didn't prevent any of those problems, nor did it make them go away. And he was back at square one and at rock bottom. Arvi has struggled with MDD, bipolar 1 and has gone through very dark times in a traumatic childhood and as a young separated father to a girl. He believes his experience and unique perspective on single parenting would be valuable as he has become a stronger and more resilient person by finding the light within his darkness. This is the Strong, Single and Human podcast. Hi, Avi. Hi. Welcome again, again to the podcast. God, you're a glutton for punishment. (laughs) <laughs> Such an honor, Claire. Thank you so much for having me back. I uh, really no, no, enjoyed no. our first conversation. Phenomenal and just really happy to be back uh, again. Well, I'm pleased to have you back because this is the Strong, Single and Human podcast, right? But this is a podcast for every single parent, right? Not just single mums, which is what there are a lot of out in the world. Single mum podcasts, single mum websites and things like that. And it's Mm -hmm. great and they're fantastic to help single mums. But you're a single dad, right? And that is correct. And you're like, you're, well, you're a rarity on my podcast anyway. I've had a few single dads on (laughs) and I want to get more on the podcast, right? Because single dads, I feel, have a bit of a nightmare of a time, really. You don't have that many groups that you can go and talk to and let off steam with and things like that. And then, and it's just a bit of a nightmare journey for you, work situation wise, legally wise. Um, It's maybe not as easy for you as a dad um, to navigate all of the various different areas you need to. Like work doesn't seem to be as sympathetic with single dads as they are with single mums. Um, well, and I'm just talking from my experience, but, um, but look, you're a single dad of an awesome daughter. Um, yeah. tell us about, t- tell everyone a bit about who you are, first of all, just in case they haven't listened to the other podcasts that I've published. And if you haven't listened to it, then why haven't you listened to it is all I'm going to say, but tell us <laughs> a little bit about who you are and then tell us about your life journey as a single dad and what's been going on. Absolutely. Yeah. So I am a single dad. Um, I had my daughter when I was 
22. That was back in 2011. Um, I am an author. I also am a co-founder of a parenting newsletter called All Star Parent. I'm also in sales and I'm a public speaker and I like throwing axes. So oh, <laughs> I did. I won't. I, I, at at targets which aren't human, right? Let's put it that way. Right. Or even that's living, right. right? Let's state that. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, like that's at, much safer. Yeah, like at non-human <laughs> living targets that we just go there. Yeah. So just wedding ones. <laughs> you're not a serial killer, is basically what you're saying. <laughs> no, no, that's definitely not for me. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, no, she's. I've got an awesome daughter. Um, she's twelve now. She just finished wow. uh, um, elementary. She's so going into um, middle school, um, and so uh, and she's going to charter school. So that's a change. Um, but yeah, it's that's come with a, its own set of challenges. You know, um, it was interesting because I knew from a pretty fairly young age that I wanted to have a child. Um, and then my partner at the time that I had met, she also had a child and, you know, women, when they're in their thirties, they're, they start having this clock that's running out. Um, so the mean. timing, <laughs> I don't know. I, that's just what I hear. Like when, when women get into their thirties, it's like a time where they, you know, urgently, if they want to have a child, that's when they let, you didn't make it happen. Um, I don't know where I, where I heard that, but Anyways, I was a late starter. Uh, um, I was 40s, so that's okay. Yeah, that's not, nothing wrong with that. No. Um, so, you know, we were, you know, I had high hopes and I was like, oh, this is going to be great. I'm going to have a family and I'm going to have a bunch of kids and it's going to be, be really great. And it did not go like that at all. <laughs> not, I think not, we all like, think that. I think we all think, I don't think, I didn't start off on this single parent journey thinking I was going to be a single parent, like at all. So I agree with you. I think yeah. we'll start off with that ideal. We're going to have a couple of kids. It's going to be great. We're all going to get on. It's, you know, it's going to be one happy families. And then it doesn't work out. And, and you know, those first two years, Claire, where they were, they were the best, they were the best two years of my life. And they were also the worst two years of my life. Wow. We could, we could not like, it was so, so horrible living with her. I would go out at night down the street to a restaurant and just bring my laptop and just work on it for hours, waiting for uh, my partner at the time to go to sleep because it was just a fight every single night. Wow. And it was hell. It was it was absolute hell. And the only reason I stayed as long as I did, even after hitting rock bottom that many times, was because I, I just kept telling myself things would get better. Like, um, this is the point, you know, my daughter needs me to be there for her. And after hitting rock bottom after I can't, I, I lost count. I was like, okay, this is, I need to move or I'm going to lose my sanity. So, um, uh, well, it's also after, about self care, isn't it as well? Right. So yeah. you can try and try and try and try within the relationship, but if both parties aren't willing to work at the relationship and work forward with it, or if you are working at it and it doesn't, it's just not working. You're just not compatible. Sometimes it's better to yeah. actually for your own sanity and yourself, your mental health to actually separate and for the mental health of the kids, basically, or the child, like you and I both have one. So, you know, so yeah. Well, the, the guilt I think gets to me because my daughter, she even says it now, like, I just want you guys, kids, they just want the parents to get along and be happy. That's really mm. what they, I think they're, we're just programmed that way, right? And I remember this when I was a kid, and I think my parents were terrible for each other, and they were complete opposites. And so, like, even I remember that feeling of just wanting th when I was at that age, right? There were so many things I didn't understand when I was at the younger age. I just had that internal feeling: I just want mom and dad to get along, and yeah. so we can have a good family. I don't want them to fight. And now I look back and I'm like, wow, I can't believe they stayed together as long as they did. Like they should have yeah. never been together. <laughs> I see that now you know? with my mum and dad and my mum and dad get on fine. They've been together 50 odd years. And I go, geez, what, what, how are you still together? But they are. So. Yeah. Well, you know, um, so yeah, it was, it was really rough and I felt like I had to be in it for my daughter's sake. But then I realized like, like you said, self-care, I could, there was no self-care in existence. So I needed to get out of that environment. And that was a very good, wise move for me. Um, Cause I started feeling a lot better after that. 
Um, and then I have my daughters on the weekends, which is, is hard because I miss her a lot and I want her more in my life. And at the same time, I know that it, what's practical and what's not and managing expectations and everything that came with that was so wildly complex and more troublesome that I could have ever imagined. Like if I had known in hindsight, I don't want to say I wouldn't have had kids, but, um, damn, I would have been, I, I, I would have been like, wow, I can't believe that's how, what, what, what comes with this. Yeah. Um, cause it's been really tough. And I think one of the things that I also remember is that I'm not the only one. Cause oftentimes I felt like I was the only one I'm stuck in this world and this is a world yeah. of hell where, where, where I was not, not all hell. I mean, there, I was, I, I love my daughter. She's a huge blessing. She has given me gifts that I, you know, could have, couldn't have possibly ever imagined. Um, but with that also came a lot of pain and hell. Yeah. Um, so that's why I say it was the best of times and it was the worst of times. Um, so did you, you actually moved out and left the family home? Is that what happened? Yeah. And And then she didn't stay very long after that. She ended up moving too. And I had, uh, helped her with that at the time. Did she stay within the same area as you or like, did she actually move states or? she 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 moved very far to the outer edge of the state for a while wow and and that was held to get her on the weekends like most of her time was just spent commuting <laughs> um that oh, wasn't yeah. fun but but it is what it is and you know i i love my daughter and i, I want her in my life um and even though things were far from perfect you know i did what i had to do so did you travel to your daughter or did your daughter then travel to you? You travel to your daughter. I, I, I've always been the one to go get her and bring her back. Yeah. Um, that's just how it's always been. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's just how it is and how it's been. But, um, yeah, that's like the, uh, the short version, I guess. Um, and you had her, you had her over the weekend. So didn't you not in the week? Cause you were working in the week. Yeah, I was, I'm the, I'm the only one working. So, uh, uh, she stopped working and then I, I was the only one working. So, uh, seeing her during the week is, was really, really challenging. Like it mm. just doesn't really happen. Um, cause I have to work. So exactly. You know, and I just feel bad because, you know, her mom gives it to me all the time. You don't spend enough time with her. You're not, you're this father. You're not, you're not this, you are that. Like, just like giving me all these labels and, and that's its own thing to deal with. Um, getting criticized on top of everything else that I have. Um, well, trying to give and- your daughter your time, but also then having to have a job so that you can then pay money for your daughter's upkeep schooling etc like that is is a challenge yeah. right because like i'm lucky like i work i don't get any i don't get any money for my son so i have to work right but i have my son 100% of the time so i understand completely where you're from right because it's juggling having a job and then also looking after your child um and being mm-hmm. able to spend the time with your child and you were tra- you were traveling as well right so that was a challenge as well yeah that was that was harder especially in the beginning um she's since moved closer so she's not as far and pickups are a lot easier than they were before um but you know still it's it's not easy and you know being being a man that comes with uh, a whole lot of other things and like her mom especially the way she um the dialogue that, that we have aren't always pleasant um and that, that that's its own thing in of itself, just trying to co-parent peacefully. Yeah. Well, I was um, going to say, did you go to, did you have to go through the courts to actually um, discuss and talk about custody and things like that of your daughter as well? Um, I'm lucky I didn't have to do that. I just put together mm-hmm. a parenting plan. We both agreed on it and that was it. But some parents and and like... I've heard both sides of the story. So I've heard it from a mum's perspective, the single mum's perspective and how tough it can be and how scary it is because there is every adventure, you know, there's every opportunity that they could lose their child. Um, But then also from a father's perspective as well, there's every opportunity 
that, you know, you're only getting to see the kids at the weekend, but there's every opportunity that you could actually lose access to your child full time as well. Right. So did you, so you went through the courts and how did you find that experience? Uh, that was pretty horrible. So what what ended up happening was initially we we had no intention to going through the courts. What where where we started off wrong was when she started telling me, "Hey, you didn't give me, um, you didn't pay child support for this week." I'm like, I'm like, I did. We just talked about this. Like, don't you remember? And she's like, "No, no, no, you didn't." And then like I showed sent her proof, and then she was like, "No, no, that was for a different time." Like she's playing these head games with me. So I'm like, you know what? Wow. Like this is this isn't working. I just want to pay through the court. I don't want to pay you anymore. And she's like, "Oh, but you'll end up paying more." And it's like I'd rather do that than than have to deal with this insanity. So. Um, I went through the courts. I started paying for them. Then my work at the time had encouraged me to take custody of her. Um, and I said, I don't want to do that, but I do want to have set schedules. So I went to the court with the intention of just getting set dates and times because it was in the beginning, it was really horrible. She's like, oh, we're busy. We're doing this. And I'm like, well, I called to reach out for plans. She's like, well, we're busy. We'll let you know when we're, when you can take her. And it was just like, oh, wow, that's it, it, yeah. it was how it was ridiculous. And I'm like, this isn't fair to me. This is really messed up. Um, so I went to the courts and then they ended up, what ended up happening was they sent her, the constable set, set like uh, an order and they thought that I was trying to take custody of her, which I was not. And then I got death threats from her, um, wow. her, from her sister's partner. Um, yeah. So that put me under a lot of stress to the point that I almost lost my job, even though they had encouraged me to, to go through with that in the first place. And, and so I was like, yes, I'm fine. And the next day I dropped the whole thing after spending a full day in court trying to get that settled. It just, I was just like, I have to pick and choose my battles. And I was like, this isn't worth it. Like this is, her family's crazy. I'm not, I'm not dealing with this. Yeah. Um, I like, I love my daughter, but like, even if I were to win that, then what her whole family would resent me and hate me and turn her against me. So it would, there was no, there was no victory in there to be had, even if I did win. So yeah. I didn't have the, I trusted my work because, you know, I, was, I, I thought that that would be the right thing to do and they encouraged me to, but um, I realized that was a mistake afterwards. And so I, I dropped the whole thing and pickups just aren't super, con- like, it's not great for her, right? Kids should have consistency and that's, that's important. And like, I, I can't really have that because like some weekends I don't hear from that, from her mom. And then I make plans with friends and she calls me out of the blue on a Saturday afternoon. You can come get her now. I'm like, I messaged you on a Friday. What, what the hell? Like, and I made, I make plans and it's like, I need a, and then she says, oh, your friends are more important than your daughter. And it's like, oh my God, it's, it's not fun. It's It's not fun. It is, it is difficult to navigate when there is no consistency and no set times to and I've been there and I've I've worked through that um and um yeah but I but the boot is on the other foot for me because I have my child right so I have my child 100% of the time so therefore when I get the phone calls it's I want them I want my child on Saturday afternoon or I want my child this weekend and I'm like well mm-hmm. we've got plans so um yeah it's the other way around for me but yeah and yeah I can imagine so what did you have were there any other challenges that you found as being a single dad like your work seems fairly understandable did you get um did you encounter other people and their views and opinions of you being a single dad and what they thought you should and shouldn't do yeah, everybody that I uh, was like in my life for the most part has said like I'm they commend me for being a good dad and being in my daughter's life. Um, you know, and like I at times feel like I wish I could be doing more. Um, you know, because I just want to give her things that I didn't have in my childhood and um have a better relationship than I than I had with my parents. Mm. And so um yeah, I mean it just it can feel lonely at times, like, or when I see a family that's all together and they're happy, that that kind of makes me wish that I had that. Um, and, you know, I'm just, I also have to work on myself too. So, um, you know, uh, 
it's it's not easy um you know and then on top of it you know i get like not from most people it's the only person i really have trouble with is is her mom the my my, yeah. my daughter's mother it's really she gives me a, the hardest time about everything um which is frustrating because of all the sacrifices i make um you know so it's the co-parenting piece is, is tough and also you know keeping my daughter happy like and so it's hard and she's getting older and she's changing you know so like everybody's telling me oh she's going to be a teenager next year like things are going to be terrible and i'm like you don't know me <laughs> you don't know my relationship <laughs> with my daughter yeah. like speak for yourself speak for yourself yeah. um don't tell me what to do you know yeah. there was one time this is when she was younger like two or three years old and I had been trying to get her mom to do um, like family therapy with me. And one time we went, and the first thing that happens when we're in the that room is she walks over to him whispering in his ear, and I heard everything she said, we need to have a talk first. And she pulls him over to the side, this therapist, and they come back in and the therapist is telling me all these things. He's like, you know, your daughter is gonna turn against you. Like this is a licensed therapist telling me about his own personal experiences and that they're definitively gonna, the same thing is gonna happen to me. And I was like, this is bullshit. I'm out of here. <laughs> like wow. it, it, it was just, it was just ridiculous. It was just like really disrespectful and inconsiderate um, and really yeah. ignorant. Um, so it's, you know, I just, I have to, at the end of the day, I, I'm doing, I can do the best I can. And even then her mom's going to criticize me. Oh, you're not, you're not doing this much. You're not doing, you're not doing this well enough. You're not doing that well enough. Like she's going to be unhappy. You're going to make this happen. I'm like, you know what? All these things you're telling me are not going to help. Why can't we just focus on being uh, good co-parents, uh, yeah. to our daughter, you know, like focus let's on focus your daughter. on it's important because i i have seen what a bad father looks like and it happened when i was um taking the subway one day and there was a man sitting next to me and he said um excuse me can i please use your phone and i don't know if he was homeless or what the case was but i asked him what he needed for and he said um he hadn't he, he hasn't spoken to his daughter in years and he started breaking down in tears crying um and saying i i left megan i love megan and i just thought to myself like how betrayed that his daughter might have felt yeah. like he said I, he said he just for years didn't contact her and then all of a sudden now it's catching up with him and like i me i message and call my daughter every day like yeah i i know what i am and what i'm not that is not something i'm not i'm not going to say i'm world's greatest dad but i do make a point to have my daughter in my life and to prioritize her um you know that i would never abandon uh, my daughter and most single dads that i've met would never do something like that yeah. i mean that's just that's just the most reckless thing i can yeah. i can i could possibly think of to bring a, a human being in this world and to abandon them um, no i you know. i completely agree i completely agree and i don't i don't understand um people women and men because i i know women who have abandoned their children as well and that i don't understand either where mm -hmm. they bring their kids into the world and then abandon them. There, there are there obviously are reasons behind all of that. Um, but I can and I could not do that to my son, and I would not do that to do, my son. Do you, do you ever think there could be a scenario where it would be okay? Uh um I think if the parent um is has been through such traumatic childhood or traumatic situations and they have their own issues to deal with um and don't fully understand the impacts of their actions can't grasp mm -hmm. the impacts of their actions potentially because of their upbringing, their background, um, just their mental health issues, then I wouldn't I I wouldn't justify it and say, oh, you know, that's a good reason for them. But I could understand uh the abandonment of that child, the the not being able to cope with bringing up their own child because of mm -hmm. mental health issues or other issues that would going on i could understand it 
I have been low, like over the last five years, six years almost of being a single parent, there have been times where I have been so low, so alone and you, and you're nodding, right? So you know where I am. And uh, probably people listening to this who are single parents have also um, experienced that you just feel so isolated. So on your own, my family don't live in the same country as me. So I don't have anyone that I can actually speak to as such, like physically go and speak to. Um, Mm -hmm. I had, health issues the first year I separated. Um, there were emotional uh, emotional domestic violence, uh, for want of a better word. I don't know what I would call it, but like, but emotional, uh, emotional uh, domestic violence situations. So um, you have to learn to deal with and cope with it. And if it hadn't have been for a couple of really key friends of mine who religiously phoned me every week to hear me chunder on about what had gone on that week and the issues and to scream on the phone and, you know, say it wasn't fair that I had got a heart issue and, um, and, you know, why did I have all of these issues and, you know, all of that stuff, right. All of that self pity stuff that goes on, right. When you're isolated on your own that, um, I don't know. I don't know how I would have got through a lot of the stuff I would have got through. I mean, I don't know. What are you like? One of the so and and, and being a single mom, it's a little bit easier for me because I don't know. But us women tend to externalize our emotions. External, like we tend to talk it out. Like, mm-hmm. what is the one thing that you? One thing or many things. Like, what's the most important thing that single dads what do you feel single dads need the most of i think well like in relation to their children well it just in the relation in in relation to yeah like their kids the situation yeah. those sort of things like because well i th- i think you i think you nailed it it's support like i'm just mm. grateful i was relieved when you said like i had a few key people that couple of key people that that found you religiously like that support is huge because like everything you said are like things i've heard when i have gone for support and i've heard from other parents um it's like things i couldn't have even conceived of like that i thought i had it bad and like and not to like compare my situation to other people but like there's some like really painful things that can come oh, with God, kids yeah. Uh, like just like things I couldn't even con- like conceive like regret and like how like marriage being destroyed like things that I would never have even thought of and like it's really really saddening to hear that like the support is is so important and I think from the child right because they ha- they have needs and they need uh, they need the parents time yeah and and um I felt guilty sometimes because I want to give her more of my time and it's just really tough because I'm the only one working right now and I'm doing the best I can. And and, I, and look, and I agree with you, right? Like um, I felt guilty, but I felt, <laughs> I felt guilty because I was working, but working was my only respite. Right. But then I felt guilty because I needed a break. I wanted a break and I needed a break. And so I'd lock myself in the toilet or I'd lock myself in the garage, right? Which I know sounds nuts, right? But like, I just needed five minutes on my own, right? And this is the thing, yeah. right? I feel so guilty about that because like I had a poor two-year-old, three-year-old, right? He didn't ask for the situation, but I had him a hundred percent of the time, right? So I couldn't go, please yeah. take my child, somebody. Um, and um you know, my respite was when he was asleep, when he was asleep and when I was at work. So I enjoyed and loved being at work because I got a break. <laughs> I got to talk to human beings and not a two-year-old who sort of yeah. could talk and sort of could. And, it, and I feel guilty for saying that, right? But um, you shouldn't. Though. But it's, we shouldn't. None of us should. As, parent, as, as parents, we all go, we're all, we're all thinking and going through the same thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's interesting how like a job, which is considered like your day job, that's stressful, yeah. right? Can actually be less stressful than dealing with like a tech two-year-old, right? Oh my God. Because they're just, 
there is no reasoning with them. It's nice. just deal. You're, you're just dealing with madness, right? Yeah. Not to make it sound terrible, but like I know. Sorry know, to all the people out there. We know like the, <laughs> we, we know the terrible twos, and they're not fun. Yeah. <laughs> there was nothing it's fun like, about that. It's like Japanese water torture. I mean, God love my son for persistence, right? But like, he would not give up sometimes, and I'd be like, yeah. buddy, honestly, I've said no. How many times do you want me to say no? Like, and just and you you have to deal with and think about the different situations and scenarios and how to deal with them, right? But Mm -hmm. if you're on your own with your child, um, sometimes you run out of ideas, right? I mean, never, I never forget. I never forget. There was a a friend of mine who we were going out and Mm -hmm. my son wouldn't go to sleep, wouldn't go, wouldn't let me go to go out. And in the end, this friend went, if you're awake, when we get back, we'll read you a story, right? Because this, my child wanted a story so if you're awake when we get back we'll read you a story right and I hadn't (laughs) thought about this there's no way my child was going to be awake when we got back but like my son then went oh okay and he just accepted it and went right okay and then (laughs) just went to bed (laughs) so like I'm like oh because you 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 get to the point of desperation and thinking of all the different situations and scenarios in your head that you go, oh, I just give up. I'm run out of ideas now. I'm exhausted. Yes. I've run out of ideas. And it was just somebody else external to that saying that thing. You go, oh, why didn't I think of that? So, yeah, I know it's crazy, That's, crazy, crazy. Yeah. I can remember so, a time like that. No, go, go. You can remember a time. Yeah, yeah just because uh, I had like an issue where like, I would say like, Hey, it's time to go, you know, whether we went to like the playground or wherever. And she would give me a really hard time about not wanting to leave. I remember I was with this friend once and she said to my daughter, like, okay, but this is the last time. And I'm like looking at her, like, that's not going to work. And it did like, yeah, like she just like some people just really understand kids on a deeper level. Like, oh, I, I, don't swear know that I, that. I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't, maybe she was just, well, sometimes, technical. sometimes that sometimes they've just gone and um, they've seen somebody else, and it works for somebody else, and they go, "Oh, yeah. well, we'll try that one." Or sometimes yeah. it's just like because I know I've got a friend who has an autistic son, and sometimes mm-hmm. something that she says, if I say it, he does what I say, but because it's his mum, he won't do what she says because it's his mum, mm-hmm. and I get it with my son right. exactly the same. Like, yeah. um, I go, "Why?" And like, my, I sometimes. <laughs> coerce my I sometimes phone my mum and go right I need you to have a discussion with with my son Oscar um because I'm saying this to him and he doesn't believe me so can you just have that discussion and because it's come from my mum who he loves and respects and Mm. stuff and it's not from me right happy Mm. days he accepts it right accepts it and I go oh my god (laughs) Jews are more often. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, yeah, exactly. Or if we're having, and this, God love my mom and my dad for this, if we are having a particular tough time of it, and we did it a lot during lockdown, because being from Melbourne, the most lockdown city in the world, when it, during COVID, we, um, I would, it, some days I would just phone my mom, uh, FaceTime my mom and say, hey. And she'd be like, hi, how's everything going? I'd be like, yeah, not really so good and she would then carry on talking to my son while I just then had a little like mental breakdown for five minutes just because it then was somebody else breaking up the connection between because you'd just been in a house for like 10 days straight like cooped up up. yeah and yeah. so having that other person come in, that other dynamic come in, even if it's on FaceTime. Which to just, just separate relief. yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just the relief. That's, just the relief. Yeah, I, I totally can relate to that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so hard. To like. Yeah. So what advice would you give to single dads out there then? With all the stuff you've gone through, what would be your three key top nuggets Nugget is my mm-hmm. new word at the moment. Okay, I like I like nugget. Yeah. Nugget. Mm. Okay. <laughs> um, mm, not sure about nugget, but it's a word that keeps coming to my head. What would be your top three nuggets that you would give to single dads out there that would help them if they're now going out on this journey of single dadness? 
Yeah, to recognize that uh, they do need support and they should identify and find a support system like you had and I had too as well. I, yeah. We need to have those those people in our in our lives um, and let them know that they have an important purpose, right, in in raising their kids to give them a better life than than we had as kids, right? To do things that our parents didn't do for us, maybe. Um, and then to also know that it's important that their kids have the tools they need to succeed as adults. Like, yes, they learn things in school, but like there's a lot of other components of growing up and they are counting on us, they need us. So they, it's also important for dads to recognize how, just really how important they are and that their kids are their, their biggest ally, right? That is a part of you. And if you're there for your kid, that they'll be there for you. Be their parent, be their mentor, be their friend. You can be all those things to them and have a, a wonderful ally, somebody that, that loves you and you can have an amazing relationship with and make your life so much more meaningful than, than it's ever been. Um, and and I think dads are important. I think, like, I have to agree with you, right? Um Mm-hmm. whether they whether your child is a boy or a girl or whatever right and there mm-hmm. are as a dad you're important to that child at different stages of their lives boys it's different from girls it's you know it's different yeah. but dads are still important right i know everyone goes yeah. on and on about mums right um and we're important too right but dads yeah. are just as important and i think I'd I'd like to add to your top tips there because I think the one other thing is if you know a single dad out there, give him a phone call, speak to them and go, hey, is everything all right? And try and support them. Um, Even if they're not, because nine times out of ten, I know what you blokes are like, right? You'll sit there and you won't call out, you won't go, oh, I'm having a really shit time of it at the moment. Like, you know. Yeah, yeah. Child number one is being a pain because they're a teenager and child number two is just winding up child number one and all of this stuff. And as men, you guys tend to deal with it. Well, I'll have a moan to my friends, but you guys mm-hmm. tend to deal with it on your own. So whether you've got the kids full-time or part-time um, or you're dealing with toxic relationships or or whatever, you guys don't talk about it. So if you do know a single dad out there, then give him a phone and just say, hi, how's it going? Is everything all right? Because that's really important too, I think. It is. And we're, as men, we're, you know, conditioned to just deal with it internally on our own, right? Don't show any emotion. All these these conditions that are supposed to be like considered masculine, a manly. Um, really, these are all things that we struggle with. And talking about it is immensely helpful because we're not keeping it bottled up. And I do have a story for you, Claire, that is important because oh, there were two, then. two. Okay. She was, this was when my daughter, she was like three or four years old yeah. and she, she could not for the life of her wipe her bum. And she was getting, and, and the rashes that they, they kept coming, they oh, kept yeah. coming and we didn't know what to do. So I was trying to help her like gently. And next thing I know, she, she has an appointment with the doctor. And I don't know what the hell her mom said, but next thing I know, I get a letter in the mail. It's got 51A on it. That means in the state of Massachusetts that you're being accused of um, sexually abusing a child. Wow. So what what resulted in that was I have, was not allowed to have any contact with my daughter for a whole month because some doctor thought that they knew what was going on. Like they never called me. Nobody ever talked to me. And I get it. That's the nature of it. Right. Cause for cases that do happen like that, they do need to investigate. And this one, there was nothing to investigate because I would never do anything like that to my daughter. I love her. I would never do that. Yeah. And I knew that. And I was pissed because I couldn't talk to her for a whole month. And that was like one of the worst times in my life. Um, and of course it got dropped, but during that time, there is one good thing that came out of it, despite how incredibly shitty that was. That I, I was going to say, incredibly shitty. That's like an understatement, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, but anyway, it was, it was, it was tormenting. Um, I was, just, I would just like break down. I, w- I would miss her so much. Um, but there was a, a good thing that came out of it, as shitty as that was, which was that we both had to take a parenting class, and wow. there was, 
and uh, and she had to take a parenting class too. Um, I got something very valuable out of that. A couple of things. One, I learned from that class to be a hero to your child. The next time that you get into an argument, which happens all the times, especially with single dads and single moms that are co-parenting, if you have to fight, do ne be a hero to your child by never arguing in front of them. You can still argue if you have to, but never make a point, even if you're like being, you know, like egged on to ha have an argument and your child's there, refuse. Put it off until your child is not present and you will be okay. a hero to your to your child. And I will never forget that because I always thought as a man that I had to be the one to get in the last word. So I always argued and I never even registered in my mind that I would, would be a hero by not arguing in front of my child. Like, so I'm grateful that I learned that. That was incredibly valuable. The second thing I learned is that a child only needs one parent, whether it's a father or a mother, they need one to be okay. They don't need both. Of course, yeah. two is better than one, but to be okay, to develop normally, they need one parent. So that was very, very, as horrible as that was, I did learn those things from that course that I still use to this day and remember. And I would encourage uh, single dads to remember that. And, and a couple other nuggets for you um, to remember that the most precious thing to your child is to give you their time. And I know that that's easier said than done. I myself struggle with this a lot, especially yeah. being the only working working parent. Um, but like, oftentimes I feel guilt, like, man, I could be a better father. Like I get, need to give her more time. I, I wanna give her more things. And, but I just remember like, they're not thinking about that. They just, they love you and they want it. They want your time. Like, they don't care if you're a millionaire or, you know, you have, a huge house or the most amazing car. They just want your time. And I try to remember that when I'm hard on myself, because as men, we don't always give ourselves grace, right? We don't get, we, we're, we're very hard on ourselves. I know that I have been, and it's important to recognize that life doesn't have to be perfect to be happy. Um, my child loves me, even though um, we're separated and I don't get along with her mom that well and a million other things. But at the end of the day, she, she loves me. Yeah. Because I love her and, and and she knows that. And um, I would say, don't let other people who tell you about like, oh, when they're a teenager, they're going to be terrible. Like, don't let other people's situations uh, affect you or make or compare compare them to yourself. Because your situation is unique with your child. And just recognize that the time is important. And the other, the greatest gift after time is taking an interest in what they're interested in, right? Yeah. Cause that's something my parents never did for me. They just didn't care about anything that I was interested in. Um, they didn't even pretend to. Um, and so I remember that. And I do remember reading about parents who, who you know, um, they took an interest, even if it wasn't like the most amazing thing, like, sure, I, I'm not super excited to watch my daughter do her, makeup routine, but I suck it up and I do it anyways. Cause it makes <laughs> her so, so freaking happy. She, she's yeah. just like, she just lights up and she's just like, yes. Like she, it's like the happiest thing in the world to her, and even though I don't want to be doing that. And I'd rather be probably even working, but I just, I do it cause it makes her happy. I try to make her part of the things that I do in my life as much as I can. If you can, wherever possible, try to make your, your child a part of what you're doing. Even if it doesn't seem like something they'd be interested in, just try. Say, hey, would you like to, I'm doing this thing. Would you like to be a part of it? You know, just like try to find ways to do things together that will strengthen the bond. And that bond is so important, especially at the younger age. So uh, these are all things I'd encourage uh, single dads to think about. I play roadblocks and I'm rubbish at it. But that's what my son wants to do. Yeah, so I play and I Minecraft did. and Roblox, and half the time I break the shit that he builds in Minecraft, oh. and then I get told off because I just like hammering the hell out of everything. <laughs> <laughs> I go, oh, what does this do? And then I'm doing my little axe and hammering stuff in Roblox yeah, and breaking I windows, do. and it's not. Oh good. yeah, she mine's crazy about Roblox. She she loves it, and she'll call me, and and I'll be like. I'll, the part of me will be like, crap, I really don't want to do this right now. Yep. And the irony is that I actually like video games. So, but for me, it's like, okay, all right. Cause the games she wants to play, they're like dress up games. And she's like, yep. oh dad, what kind of hairstyle do you want? I'm like, I don't know. I don't, uh, I don't do that stuff. I've like, got I don't man know. hair. I've yeah, got my hair like, short. 
So she'll spend like a half an hour with me, like showing me different styles of like in Roblox. And it's like, I the need most to ridiculous friend thing. her on Roblox then because I prefer I know, to do seriously. the hair stuff than doing the stuff that Oscar's <laughs> doing. Believe you me. Like I'm jumping off of buildings and <laughs> flying through the air to win money to build my building up. I'm like, I don't want to no, do the that. One, the one thing that makes me upset about that is that they, that, now the games when i was a kid you paid for it once and you had the game forever oh. now they want you to pay robux you want they want you to spend actual money for yeah, fit, i'm for too tight thing. for that I'm, I'm like way no way don't be a sucker like no. i know you want that and i'm sure it sounds really amazing and yeah. if i had grown up with it i would probably not have the same opinion and i might be on board with it but i'm like no freaking way like no. th this this is this is ridiculous like i can't like, think of anything not, worse I can't, like right? I'm like, it's... earn roadblocks, go and earn them, then you can buy stuff, right? But I, I ain't giving you a hundred bucks <laughs> to go and bloody spend them on a load of oh fictitious. My God. Oh fictitious, no! Yeah. How just old make... do we sound? <laughs> you know, though, it's just it, it's like there's so many other things you could spend money on. That is oh the absolute. God. Absolute last thing in the world. You might as well light your money on fire or flush. I know. Of that's what I. <laughs> that's what I think. Right. I sit there and I go. I am not giving you a hundred bucks to have a thousand Roblox or whatever they are to yeah. go and buy some purple suit that you can wear on some game. Uh, that's gonna like you're gonna be bored of and then get rid of. I'm like, yeah, no you'll never. Yeah, no. Spend twenty dollars, yeah. and they want like twenty dollars. They want ten dollars, no. twenty dollars, like. Like insane. My God. Like, and but what are we teaching our kids? Like I'm like, mm -mm. <sighs> just yeah. wanted to be more careful, careful with yeah. their money than like, yeah, you know, so uh, look, yeah. Avi, how do you stay positive though? Because you've had like, it doesn't sound like you've still got a great relationship with the mum, but like, yeah. how do you stay positive and how do you, well, get through it all? Well. I go on shows like this one and I talk to <laughs> amazing, amazing people like you. <laughs> oh, not sure about that, uh, but thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I try to stay occupied and I know that's like, it's easier said than done. Like one of the things that I preach a lot is like, yes, do, uh, do mindfulness, meditate for just 12 minutes per day. That's, uh, I'm a big believer Ooh, in a Why just ja. 12? Why 12? So, so neuroscientist and author Amishi Ja, uh, she wrote yeah. the book Peak, Mo Peak Mind, and she specifically recommends like 12 minutes per day, five days per week for um, a total of just one hour a week, which makes it really manageable, right? Because they have ones that are like 45 minutes an hour. And like, oh, God, yeah. and, I, and I was like, if you meditate for like 12 minutes, it feels like an eternity. So I to do one asleep. for, <laughs> yeah, right. It's like, it, it's like. You just have to sit there and like, man, it, it, it's not even that it's hard. It's just getting to that point where it's like, okay, I'm going to set aside this time where I'm just literally sitting here. Like, is this going to even help me? And it actually does. Like it makes us more present. It, it does reduce anxiety if we do it consistently, right? Because anxiety is like an overwhelming thought of too many thoughts and like we're not managing, having emotional regulation. And mindfulness does help with that. And yeah. so, but I make up excuses. I'm like, oh, I don't have the time right now. Or I'm just, and I do have the time. We've, we've got 12 minutes. It's is not 12 a lot. minutes. It's, it's 12 minutes. It's like nothing, right? But like, it's so easy to make excuses and I'm guilty of this too. But like when I, when I do actually do the meditation for 12 minutes, I do feel better. I do mm -hmm. feel more relaxed. I do feel more composed and I do feel more grounded. So like doing that, it does, um, it does strengthen uh, the mind uh, and also leads to overall improved brain health and well-being. And that's coming from Mishi Jha. She's a neuroscientist and author. So I trust what she has to say. Um, uh, so mindfulness, that's helpful. Um, staying occupied, trying to avoid arguments as much as I can. That's, that's all, that also is really tough, especially if I'm not having a good day or, um, you know, God knows what other things. Um, you know, and just like having that support, like we talked about, and like yeah. often, oftentimes it can just feel like a dark tunnel, right? It's like, yes. is this going to ever ever get better? And it does. It, it does get better. And th there's one thing that I learned actually from from my daughter's mother, and I didn't learn anything from her. But one thing she told me that I that I do believe is that time heals all. 
So it, just time will rectify things, even if things will eventually change, things will get better. This and too gets, shall pass. That's this too shall whether pass. It's, another, whether it, whether it's good or bad, right? This too shall you know, pass. Well, like, well, it gives it gives us a sense of hope too, right? Especially if like in a really tough spot and if things just feel like really awful, like those those mantras they're they're powerful because they give us something to cling on to. They give yeah. us hope, and and it do, and I in my experience, after amount of you know time has passed, right things do change and they usually move in the right direction and get better in some way or another. So it's being patient with yourself and trying to keep an optimistic, positive mindset, having the support systems, you know, having a hobby helps too. That helps me, even if it's something small, just to have something else to look forward to yeah. and break it up. Right. Cause it's not healthy to be around in the same environment 24 seven. We got to break it up a little bit monotony right and so that's that's incredibly important uh to do um in addition to the other things i had mentioned so those are those are a few of the things that i would mention to stay to stay no, positive that's fair enough that's fair mm. enough look if there are other people other single dads out there who want to get in touch with you how do they get in touch with you can the they can way, they get in touch with you absolutely i'm i'm all for networking connecting with other people um, and finding win-win opportunities or just just having a chat. I'm happy to speak with anybody. Uh, you can look me up. On my, I'm on LinkedIn. That's where I connect with most people. It's Avi Wolfson. Um, if you type it in, I'll pop right up on LinkedIn. Um, I can put the link in the blurb as yeah, well. Yeah, if, so if, if you don't mind. I, yeah, I'd, I'd appreciate yeah, yeah. it. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that's that's the main place. I also, like I mentioned, I also have the parenting newsletter, All Star yes. Parent. That's that's great for moms and dads, uh, single or otherwise. Um, Can people? How do people get onto the um, mail mailing list? How do they get? Yes. So if you could also throw that in the uh, yeah. show notes, Claire, it's just allstarparent.substack.com, and okay. um, they. There'll be a pop up right there. You, you could, they can just uh, subscribe. You just throw in your email and you get it. It's free right now, so uh, it doesn't cost anything. It has a cool. ton of amazing resources and, and valuable information about single parenting and uh, all things parenting as well. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. And look, final question. Final question. Mm -hmm. Although, well, I'm not sure what your answer is going to be because you've given so <laughs> much in this podcast. <laughs> but what piece of advice were you given? And that could be regarding single parenting. It could be regarding something else. But like what piece yeah. of advice were you given that you still use today? I've got a couple for you. Oh, two, right. First one, if you, if you fail, never give up because fail, F-A-I-L, means first attempt in learning. Yeah. When you feel like you've reached the end, E-N-D, N stands for effort never dies. And when you're rejected and you're told no, N-O stands for next opportunity. So that is one takeaway to, right? It's our frame of mind, yeah, how we no, perceive things, right? Because those are, well, that's negative. I'm going to use those on my son. But, Don't go there. Yeah. I said to him, <laughs> uh, I said to him, um, Oh, what was he? he was doing? He was annoyed with himself because he made a mistake last night in some work he was doing. And I said to him, hey, mistakes are our friend, buddy. Mistakes are our yeah. friend. Yeah. <laughs> the, now I've got three That's others right. to use. So this is great. Yeah. Yeah. And I have one more for you. Um, okay. So I, I always thought this was like the right way to say it, but I heard, I don't, you know, Simon Sinek, you've heard of him. Oh, love him. Love yeah. him. So I heard every time I listen to him, he has something new and amazing to say that he changes does. He my does. Thinking. Um, and he said this one, which is something that sticks with so many of us. We think that it's the right view, which is work hard, play hard. And he says that's a terribly unhealthy mindset, right? A better approach is to work smart and play always. And that's I think that's enough. awesome. No, that's <laughs> fair enough. No, right. wow, wow. We don't, we don't, we don't want to burn ourselves out. We want to work smarter. And we should always be looking to play. I mean, we want to have fun yeah. 
you know, to, to make things more manageable? Why does it have to be hard? Why does everything have to be hard? It's hard enough well, as it is. <laughs> well, it's funny you say, you say that, right? Because I read something this morning that basically said, don't work harder, work different. Because if you can't mm. do something, instead of working harder at it, do it differently. Because maybe yeah, different how you'll do Yeah. So I loved that this morning. So I was like, oh, that's pretty good. That's got me thinking. Um, so in, if something's not working, if something's not working or you're not getting what you want, instead of working harder to get what you want, do it differently and you might get it a different way. So 100%. that's okay. Happy days. Awesome. There we go. Yeah. You got one from me as well. <laughs> Bloody awesome. hell. Um, <laughs> look, it's uh, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for spending the okay, time nice. a second time with us on the podcast. Um, thanks, Arvi. It's um, it's great. And um, it's really late at night where you are as well, I think. I'm a night owl, so I'll probably yeah, be up you are, which hour. is great, which <laughs> so is awesome yeah, for it's, us because we yeah. get to interview you. But, um, yeah. yeah, look, so I'm going to let you – well, you're probably going to continue working, but hey-ho. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, look, I'm going to let you get on. But thank you. Thanks for coming and joining us. Thank you so much for having me, Claire. Really an honour to come back again. And, uh, oh, as always, I really enjoy speaking with you on your show. Thanks for listening. If you've enjoyed this podcast and you would like to hear more – please hit subscribe wherever you like to hear podcasts. If you would like to support us further, share this episode with your friends and family. And finally, drop us a review on iTunes as I'd love to hear your thoughts, comments and ideas. It all helps me to understand and produce awesome content you want to hear just like this. If you want to check out our past episodes, write to us, appear on the podcast, or for links, resources, and show notes, go to our website, www.strongsingleandhuman.com. We are also on all the usual social media platforms, Insta, Facey, and Twitter. I hope you have a wonderful week. And I hope to see you back here again soon. Be kind to yourself and remember, no one is perfect. We're all just putting one foot in front of the other and doing our best. I'm Claire Martin and you've been listening to the Strong, Single and Human podcast.